Hey guys, this is Gary Hot on my YouTube channel, Well That's Good 86. This is Hot Boys Garage Episode 2, where we talk about finding engine quench. This is the first episode of Hot Boys Garage where we talk about actual technical information. What is engine quench? It's got a lot of names. Uh, it's also called squish, deck height, or piston to head clearance. In a nutshell, it is the distance between the top of the piston not the dome, but the flat part top of the piston at top dead center and the cylinder head. How is it calculated? The quench is the deck clearance plus the compressed head gasket thickness. And by deck clearance, I mean how far the piston is in or out of the hole, the hole being the cylinder. We'll talk more about how to calculate this later on in the video and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So what does squish or deck height or quench affect exactly and, and why would you care about measuring this and setting this appropriately? Uh, it, it really affects uh, a lot of factors in the engine. It affects the speed and the completeness of how and when the air fuel mixture is burnt inside of the cylinder. It affects the possibility of detonation and it also affects the chances of whether or not the piston is gonna to contact to the cylinder head. We're also gonna talk about what the deck height or quench or squish should be in a 450 based single cylinder four stroke engine. A deck height that is on the safe side would be 40 thousandths of an inch. If you're looking at a performance race engine, you're gonna want under 40 thousandths of an inch. Really, you should consult your builder. There are a lot of factors that you have to take into account for setting your deck height and there are a lot of adjustments that could be made to affect your deck height. Uh, the factors would be rod stretch and expansion, piston expansion from heat, and some things you can do to adjust your deck height or your squish or your quench would be uh, adding or removing base and head gaskets, uh, as in the thickness or the number of, and also uh, your cylinder or jug height, meaning you could mill some off the bottom of your cylinder to get your piston further in or out of the hole. To try and help illustrate what piston to head clearance is, I drew up a really bad illustration here on the bottom right hand side of this whiteboard. I've got it zoomed in here, so hopefully you guys can see it. What we're looking to do is calculate the measurement from the flat part of the top of the piston here to the bottom of the cylinder head here. And that is done so by getting the distance that the piston is in or out of the hole or cylinder and adding that to the compressed head gasket thickness. This calculation is completed with the piston and cylinder on the engine bolted and torqued down with the base gasket in place. Let's switch gears here and talk a little bit about the tools, parts, and pieces you're gonna need in order to measure your deck height, quench, or squish. You're gonna need a dial indicator, some calipers, a deck bridge. I think I found this one on Amazon for less than 50 bucks. It's from Proform. Depending on how far your deck bridge will let your dial indicator slip down in, you may need some dial indicator arm extensions like this. I think this was from Anytime Tools. I'll put the links to all of these things in the video description. You're also gonna need the head gasket that you're gonna use, head stud nuts and washers. You're gonna need some spacers and washers these will slip down over your head studs and you'll actually torque down the cylinder with these in place in order to simulate your cylinder being torqued down by your head. And by that, I'll, I'll show you what I, I mean. And last but not least, you'll need a pen and piece of paper to record your measurements. You'll slip your washers and spacers over the head studs like so. and you'll put your head bolt nuts on. And once you've got all four on, you'll torque these down so that it'll simulate the cylinder being torqued down by the head. Couple things to note, you wanna make sure that you do not damage 
the top of your cylinder. Another quick tip would be that uh, a lot of guys use uh, old piston wrist pins for the spacers here. They work really well. A couple of things to note. This is probably going to look quite a bit different than the engine that you have. This is a 649cc engine that is a dry block. Uh, this cylinder has no water jackets and it also has ARP head studs. I just wanted to make note of that in case uh, you guys were wondering why this looked different than your engine. All right, now I've got my cylinder torqued down with my spacers here. I'm only using two, you can use four. Torqued them down with uh, another tool that I forgot to mention earlier, torque wrench. So in order to bring the piston up and down in the bore, you'll need to manually turn the engine over. Normally, over here on the clutch side of the engine, there would be a crank check hole cap here that you could remove with a large Allen wrench. Again, this is a 649cc drag engine, so that crank check hole cap has been replaced with a remote start stud and custom fitting. What would you would do with a normal engine would be is you would remove that crank check hole cap and then use another Allen wrench to turn the crank over by hand inside there. For this engine, we can just use the remote start stud to move the piston up and down inside of the cylinder. Next, we'll take our deck bridge and our dial indicator. We'll install the dial indicator into the deck bridge. Make sure it's seated all the way. Tighten it down. Then we'll take the deck bridge and place it on the cylinder. We need to first make sure that the deck bridge is sitting flat on the top of the cylinder surface, both sides. And then we'll need to make sure that the dial indicator is placed at the piston wrist pin area and that our dial indicator has plenty of play up and down. You'll need to move your dial indicator around or your deck bridge around if your deck bridge is not sitting flat across the cylinder surface or if your dial indicator is not right at the piston wrist pin area or if your dial indicator does not have enough travel up or down to see how far the piston is in or out of the hole at top dead center. Next, we'll move our deck bridge over to where the dial indicator is resting on top of the cylinder surface. Here, we'll zero our dial indicator and we'll take note of what the measurement says. Next, we'll move our dial indicator back over to where it is sitting flat on the cylinder surface and resting on the piston flat spot here at the wrist pin area. We'll rotate the engine over manually and we'll take the measurement of the piston at its highest point in the bore. So we're taking a time out here, we're going to go back to the whiteboard and I'm going to explain to you guys why we just took the measurements that we did. Earlier we went over the fact that quench is calculated by the deck clearance plus the compressed head gasket thickness. The two measurements we just recorded earlier are going to help us figure out the first part of the equation, the deck clearance. The deck clearance, also known as the cylinder surface to piston measurement, is essentially how far the piston is in or out of the cylinder at top dead center. When we first set up our deck bridge and dial indicator, we moved the dial indicator and deck bridge over such that the dial indicator was resting on the cylinder surface. There, we zeroed the dial indicator. So let's say our dial indicator reading at that point was 800 thousandths of an inch, illustrated by number one here. Next, we move the deck bridge and dial indicator over so that the dial indicator was resting on the flat spot of the piston at the wrist pin area. Then we rotated the engine over and we took the highest reading of the dial indicator. That highest reading was top dead center, TDC. Let's say that measurement for number two was 795 thousandths of an inch or five thousandths less than our measurement from number one above. So what does that mean? That means that our piston is in the hole below the cylinder surface five thousandths of an inch, which also correlates to our deck clearance being five thousandths of an inch. Okay, so for a second example, 
Let's say we still have our dial indicator reading of 800 thousandths of an inch for our first measurement. That's with the dial indicator resting on the top of the cylinder. But our second reading with the dial indicator resting on the piston flat at the wrist pin area was 805 thousandths of an inch, which means it is five thousandths more than our measurement for number one. We come down here and we look at B. Our deck clearance is minus five thousandths of an inch, meaning our piston is out of the hole, five thousandths of an inch. And we call that minus five thousandths of an inch because that means the piston is gonna be even closer to the cylinder head surface. I'll carry the measurements from examples A and B forward, and I'll show you guys how to calculate engine quench using these two different type readings. Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle. You'll need to take your head gasket and figure out what the compressed thickness is. There's multiple ways to do this. Probably the most accurate method is to consult with the manufacturer and see what the compressed thickness is. A popular brand of gaskets in the 450 world is Comedic or Cometic, I'm not sure how you say it exactly, but they will actually give you what the compressed thickness is for any and all of their gaskets. You can even get custom gaskets made for compressed thicknesses of your liking. Another not so scientific way of getting your gaskets compressed thickness is taking your head gasket, taking a pair of calipers, and squeezing the head gasket with your calipers and seeing what reading you get. I don't necessarily recommend that. It actually works pretty well with these copper SCE head gaskets. They're not a multi-layer gasket, so you're not really trying to compress much with your fingers. If all else fails, contact your engine builder or your head gasket manufacturer. All right guys, so we're back to the whiteboard for finding our final calculations of engine quench. Like I said in the beginning, quench is the deck clearance plus the compressed head gasket thickness. Previously, we had two examples, A and B. A had our deck clearance of positive five thousandths of an inch, meaning our piston was in the hole five thousandths of an inch, and B had our deck clearance of minus five thousandths of an inch, meaning our piston was out of the hole five thousandths of an inch. In both of these examples, I'm gonna use a compressed head gasket thickness of 40 thousandths. So for our example A, where our piston was in the hole, five thousandths of an inch, we have our compressed head gasket thickness of 40 thousandths of an inch. Our engine quench, or squish, or deck height is 45 thousandths of an inch. For example, B, where our piston was out of the hole, five thousandths of an inch, and our compressed head gasket thickness is 40 thousandths of an inch, same as it was here. Our engine quench is 35 thousandths of an inch. All right, so hopefully all that made sense, and now you know how to find your engine's quench or deck height, squish, whatever you want to call it. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something. If so, hit the like and subscribe button. Follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram. I'll put the links to both of those in the video description. And keep checking back for more content. I think the next video that I'm going to do is going to be how to degree a camshaft on a 450cc based engine. Thanks for watching.